watching NBC4, the Tri-State News Channel. And now, Sue Simmons, Dean Shepard, Al Roker, and Len Berman. This is News Channel 4, live at 5. Massage therapy is something most people picture as a luxury that well-to-do people have to relax or pamper themselves. In fact, massage can take many forms, and depending on how it's done, can be very useful as physical therapy, pain relief, swelling reduction, and now, even as a post-operative therapy. Watch. Massage therapy has been used for hundreds of years as a tool to reduce stress, but its benefits are now extending into modern medicine, where it's being used as a post-surgical healing treatment. This type of massage is called manual lymph drainage massage. It's a special type of a massage technique that was developed in Europe in the 1930s. And manual, of course, means with the hands, and lymph refers to our lymphatic system. Sonny Goodman thought the manual lymph drainage massage sounded like a good idea after a recent cosmetic surgery left her face pretty swollen. It's more relaxing than a regular massage. It's, um, she works basically on the lymph um, glands and gently, very gently, touches them and massages them. And it causes the swelling to decrease. In fact, this technique was developed more than 60 years ago as a way to treat lymphedema, a chronic extreme swelling in the arms and legs due to obstruction or removal of lymph channels, often after radiation therapy or breast cancer surgery. Yeah, it was almost like a, a sponge. If you would have a wet sponge and, and, and just let it hang, it would take a while for the water to drip out. But if you would squeeze the sponge, you could dry it out much sooner. Reducing swelling seems to be one of the greatest benefits of massage therapy. Dr. Zabowski and his staff are so pleased with the results of massage therapy, they've incorporated it into their standard post-surgical treatment. Typically, we use it for any kind of facial cosmetic surgery, whether it's eyelid surgery, facelift surgery, liposuction, even breast augmentation. Now, this kind of massage is not something you should try yourself. Even though massage looks simple enough for anyone to try, you actually have to know what you're doing, or you can do more harm than good. You can learn more about medical stories on our website. It's located at newschannel4.com. Again, that is newschannel4.com. A manual lymph drainage massage also helps get rid of bruising more quickly and even reduces pain somewhat, all as long as it's not done too soon after surgery. Some healing has to take place before you start in on the massage, but it does help. He was mainly talking about cosmetic surgery, but I assume that you could also yes. apply it to a lot of other types of surgery or injuries. A lot of, a lot of other types of surgery or injuries. The area where this really got started was, as, as I mentioned briefly in there, was uh, women often who have breast surgery or radiation therapy for breast cancer end up with a terrible, terrible problem called lymphedema, where the arms or legs can swell up to huge, huge sizes. It's really tough to get rid of. It's very painful and uncomfortable. Um, and no, there's no real good treatment for it. And this massage therapy actually helps push all this lymph up and out of the way and, and often can get the limbs back down to a, at least a manageable or usable size. Mm. Good. Terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Welcome back. In times of crises, it's often comforting to know that you are not alone, that togetherness can make the difference when major decisions must be made, including what to do when breast cancer strikes. Our next guests represent hope for women who have had a breast or breasts removed and are contemplating breast reconstructive surgery. Joining us now to talk about the support group called Image Reborn is Dr. Robert Zabowski and Ann Ward. Welcome. Welcome both of you. Good morning. Thank you. All right, Doctor, let's start with you. What is, what is the, uh, the, the practice or the image reborn all about, this, this apparently free group that you have? Well, about seven years ago, we found that there was a, a demand and a need to uh, help women who have been through the reconstructive process or who are considering breast reconstruction. Up until that point, what had happened when a, a woman had lost a breast or a breast? Well, typically, they would be uh, seen by a plastic surgeon for consideration of breast reconstruction, but I think the, the issues of breast reconstruction and breast cancer go beyond the, the actual breast reconstruction itself. There are emotional issues uh, that many women have to deal with, and we found that the best way for them to deal with this was in such a support group as Image Reborn. So, in other words, doctors were looking at this strictly from a medical view and not from an, emo an emotional view or self-esteem view, but getting to the medical end of it more quickly than anything else. Well, we would try as much as we could to, right. to get into the social and, and personal and psychological point of view, but it's difficult. It's very difficult. Now, Ann, you underwent the surgery about two and a half years ago. Correct. You attended the support group before you made that decision? No, I didn't. I didn't have the time limits did not allow me to go, but I went right after my surgery, and it was the best thing. Tell me about it. I was not alone. You, when you're first diagnosed, you think you're the only one. But then going to the support group, you found out the same problems that I was thinking of or going through, 
somebody else went through it. And knowing that is a big concern. Not my questions. Am I feeling right? Is, am I doing the right thing? When you have somebody else that went through it, it's easier. Doctor, this must be a tremendous blow to women to lose a breast or breasts in their self-esteem, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, uh, the, the advantage of the support group is that it, it gives women a chance to voice these concerns and to heal for, heal, hear from other women who've been through this uh, and to get their perspective on what it was like to go through it and what it was like to survive it. What kind of advances have there been in, in medical uh, breast reconstru reconstructive surgery in the last 10 years or even the seven years that you've started this imagery born? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest advance really is the, is the uh, tissue reconstruction where we're using one's own tissue to reconstruct the breast. That's been around for about 10 years, but it's really per 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 been perfected uh, over the past several years to the point now where we can reconstruct a breast of any size or shape and, and virtually create an identical breast to the opposite normal breast. Mm -hmm. And you said you didn't have the time between finding out you had breast cancer and reconstructive surgery, that it was two monumental decisions you had to make back to back. It must have been difficult for you. Very difficult. First, you've got the impression that you've got cancer. Now, what do you want to do about it? How are we going to do about it? How soon can I get rid of it? And trying to get through all the aspects and being then told, you know, you have to have this operation. Then what am I going to do? Well, do I want a prosthesis? Do I not want that? Do I want an implant? Do I? You have too many questions and answers to be taken care of. And I went with the um, tram, and I'm very satisfied. When uh, the tram would be? Um, taking my stomach muscle and mm -hmm. transferring it up into the breast to make it natural. Are there things that you can talk about? at this this meeting this imagery born uh, support group that you could not talk about with your family members and if so what were some of the things you couldn't talk about basically none of my family ever had breast cancer so it's to talk with somebody that went through it knowing their fears that's the big thing is the fears and unanswered questions that I couldn't even ask anybody about because they didn't know Doctor, do they come to you initially after this has happened to talk about reconstructive surgery? Do you recommend this program to them right off the bat, or do you find out where their head is at? Well, we recommend it to all patients who, who come to us for reconstructive surgery, and it's been a real uh, a boom for these patients. Uh, and, and in fact, the effort, you know, it's, it's been growing and growing over the past seven, seven years uh, through the efforts of people like Ann who, who coordinate the, the group to the point now where we're considering uh, taking this to uh, a national level. Mm -hmm. and bringing this group to other areas throughout the country. Do you, you find that some women handle it better than others, or do you find the same, for lack of a better term, emotional symptoms in everyone who's gone through this? Well, you know, everyone's different. I mean, there are many uh, patients who really don't want to go to the group, uh, but may network through telephone conversations, through monthly newsletters, and other means. And then there are patients who uh, find it helpful to actually participate in the group activities. So to some degree, it's a personal choice. Now, and how are you involved in the group now all these years later? Um, I lead the support group. We meet mm -hmm. once a month and it's some nights it boils down to just a jam session where we discuss our, our problems between each other. Is it something you ever thought you'd be doing? I didn't think I'd ever be doing something like this. Mm -hmm. All right, Ann Ward and Dr. Rabowski, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank Sabowski, you. I apologize. And uh, we wish you continued success.